Good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining me with this early morning uh, presentation about uh, open to the elections, how they are organized. Uh, it's an important topic for those who are not members, open to the members yet, or those who are open to the members and they are going to vote in uh, an upcoming open to the election, uh, let's say this year. So my name is Ish Sukan. I am a systems architect in a company called La Sentinelle. I'm from Mauritius, it's very far from here. Uh, and uh, let's start. So why do we need elections? What is the purpose of this talk? Open to see the project has a board. And the main goal of having uh, this open source board is that they are tasked to do certain things about the project, uh, about how to guide the project, how to facilitate communi communication with the rest of the community and user, and uh, facilitate a lot of things about uh, decision making in the project. All right? Now, this board consists of six members. Five seats are elected by you guys, open to the members. And uh, one person, the chairperson, is, is appointed separately by SUSE Enterprise. The current members of the open to the board are Dr. Gerald, he's here. We have Neil, who must be somewhere here. We have uh, Gertian, I met him yesterday, he must be somewhere here. Uh, Mauricio uh, Douglas at the back. Uh, there are also some appointed positions by the board, so sometimes the board might need some people to assist them, uh, uh, let's say for a specific project, a specific task. Now, those positions, uh, uh, a person at, uh, in that position, appointed position, do not have the same privileges as board members. So they don't get voting rights, uh, but they get certain uh, empowerment to take decisions uh, in some areas of the project. Next comes uh, the election committee, the role of the election committee. So like I said earlier, a few slides earlier, uh, we need five members to be on the board, and these five members are selected by the community members. But how are they going to select them? Do we do it at this conference and everybody screams that I want to be on the board and the rest of the room is going to say, yay, nay, something like that? No, it's not a parliament, it doesn't happen like this. So we have a platform, we have an election platform, uh, and our open city members are spread across the world. So the electronic platform makes sure that um, all the members have their say. And uh, the role of the election committee is to plan the election, uh, call for nominations, uh, and uh, get, uh, vet those nominations, or whether those people fit uh, to run as candidates as per certain rules, and uh, who are the people who are going to vote in these elections. There are certain rules. Uh, the last... Uh, Yes, the election committee is appointed for each election by the board. And the last election, that is the board election of uh, 2022, was run by Aris Vacha, he's in Hong Kong, UTC plus eight, very far from here. Edwin Zakaria uh, in uh, Jakarta, Indonesia, again UTC plus seven. Myself, Mauritius, UTC plus four. Uh, Yes, like I said, elections happen, and there are a, set, a broad set of rules. How we're going to conduct the election, how we are going to call for nomination and select uh, uh, the running candidates, and so uh, when the election happens, or when the election is over, what are the rules to decide whether somebody uh, has been elected or not? Whether there is a tie, and if there is a tie, what to do? So, uh, the wiki page uh, is uh, quite lengthy and defines a lot of things. It defines the size of the board and the term of members, the rule about company affiliation, for example. I think uh, there cannot be a certain number of uh, people on the board from the same company. 
uh, to avoid a, dis like, uh, a disbalance on the board. Yes, decisions about nominations, entires, appointments, uh, what happens if somebody, a board member, resigns? Uh, do we have to do an election within a certain time frame, the next day, next month? Uh, what does happen? Everything is set in those rules. Eligibility, ed eligibility and validity. Now, election officials or volunteers like you guys, uh, we don't have to understand or read all these rules and know them by heart. It's for each election, depending on the situation that arises, we go check and we consult among ourselves, that is the three of us, or if we have more uh, volunteers in uh, the election committee, all of us will have some, some video call and decide, hey, this and this happened, we are supposed to elect uh, two members, uh, we've got only one candidate, so what are we going to do, how are we going to run the election? For example, if there is a, just one vacancy, sorry, I stay on this slide. If there's only one vacancy on the board and we got only one candidate, what do we what do? We do? do we just elect the guy and say, hey, hooray, you're selected for, for the board? No, there are certain rules. Uh, certain rules. Uh, for example, in the case of one vacancy, one candidate, uh, we have to get a certain, uh, I think, 50% of yes, uh, so that that person is elected. Uh. All right, so, like I said, there is an uh, electronic platform called Helios, where we conduct the elections. Uh, the platform itself is managed by OpenSUSE Heroes, uh, and the volunteers in the election committee are, give, are granted privileges to create those electric, uh, uh, electronic, sorry, electronic elections. And uh, we cannot tamper with the system. We do not have uh, access to the server. We do not have access to the rest of the infra that runs uh, this platform. We only have access to create those elections. And uh, a few things that you need to know as an open source member who wants to vote in an election. The teams you should know about, first and foremost, the membership committee. They are responsible to approve memberships, or if there are some issues with somebody's uh, membership status, they are the ones to reach out, tell them your problems, and they're going to fix. The second team, Open Source Heroes. Uh, you m maybe you are an active uh, community member, you are uh, an open source member, but you are having trouble logging on the election platform because maybe you never received the credential or probably your email address changed and it was never updated on the system. So who are the guys you are going to contact to fix this uh, problem? Year after year, I've been volunteering, I think, uh, since 2018 in the election committee. And uh, year after year, we get similar kind of questions from different members. Hey, I cannot vote. I cannot log in. And then we check and tell them, is this your current email? Oh, no, sorry, my email changed. So please contact Heroes, update the email, and we will resend you your credential to the new email address. Things like that. So that's it. Three teams that you should know about. Membership Committee, Open Susie Heroes, and the Election Committee. The current members of the Membership Committee, as per the wiki, updated as at January 2022. Uh, the members are Dominic, Martin, Wolfgang, and Bill Schouten. The team is reachable through membership-officials at opensuse.org. So if you're here at the conference, uh, as per my knowledge, you are a contributor to OpenSUSE now, and if you want to become a member, you're eligible to apply. On the wiki page, there is a, a sort of, how do you call that, uh, instructions on how to apply to become a member. Uh, and if you have further questions about memberships, reach out to these guys. Again, our OpenSUSE heroes, like I said, you have a problem, maybe you cannot log in, maybe your email address changed, or some other weird thing that is happening. Your email address is correct, uh, but you're never receiving the email from the uh, OpenSUSE platform, election platform. So again, election officials, we cannot fix it for you. The guys to call are the OpenSUSE heroes. And how you do that, you can just send them an email at uh, admin at opensuse.org. Automatically, this is going to create a ticket on progress at opensuse.org. Or 
There is also the OpenSUSE Heroes mailing list. You can reach out to them, maybe have a discussion with some people there about your problem, and once they tell you what to do, then you can go and create the tickets. Lastly, election officials. So an election is happening. Now you have some questions about maybe the election itself, or you want to shout out to us because uh, you do not like any of the candidates. It's not our fault, but still, some people scream at us. We've been receiving some, some emails. You can still do so, election-officials at opensource.org. All right, so an election has been created by the election officials, and how you would know about that. There is usually the open source mailing list where we announce in advance that an election is happening and you're about to receive an email to vote in an election. We post on Twitter, Doug keeps uh, tweeting about election officials from time to time. Uh, I try to post on LinkedIn and Facebook, but hey, I know these days people on TikTok, Instagram or whatever, we are not there. But make sure that you're on the mailing list to get the latest information about the elections. So when the election is about to start, from Helios, the team, the election committee, will trigger an email. And in that email, you're going to, go, to get an election URL where you can click and go and vote in the election. You will also receive a credential, so a voter ID and a password. For obvious, obvious reason, I've uh, I've hidden some parts of this email because otherwise this uh, demo is still live and uh, you might even uh, log in. So this is the first email that you're going to receive. Uh, is it blurry? Can you, oh, it's fine, you can read. All right, so like I said, the first email that comes to you, uh, we have two formats. We have a longer format and a shorter fo format. But in both of those emails, uh, there are three things. A link on which you click, uh, a voter ID, and a password. All right, the shorter, uh, I say there is a longer version and a shorter version because uh, when the election starts, we trigger an email to all voters. They get the longer version. But then along the way, there are some people who tell us we did not receive the email and blah, 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 something like that. So then we can select the exact member and we click on uh, to, to trigger an email for that person. So that's a shorter version. So the next thing is you click on the uh, link, you get a page like this from Helios. Okay, this is an election demo for OpenSUSE Conference 2022. You get to select your candidates and you click on start to start. You click on the start button to, to vote on the election. Here, you will be presented a list of candidates. You will get a question first. The, sorry, not a question, but a description about the election telling you that uh, we are having this election. We need to select two candidates. And uh, you are presented three choices of candidates. You, you have Mr. John Doe, you have Ms. Jane Smith, and you have Mr. Jack Sparrow. All right, so you select Jack Sparrow. You like Jack Sparrow. So the option here is to proceed like that because you selected only one, or there will be a prompt. You may select up to two choices. You cannot select three. If you select three, there will be a prompt, no maximum of two choices. So since you can select two, you say, okay, I'm going to vote for Jack Sparrow and Jane Smith. Great, now you proceed. After you proceed, uh, in the past, we have uh, received emails from members telling us that they voted but it seems that the vote didn't count. Actually, some people uh, stopped at this page because they do not realize there is a button down that where it's written, submit this vote. The moment they see that uh, the ballot tracker is a long string of characters, they might think that they have already voted in the election, but that's not actually the case. You have to click on the button. And when you click, this is what happens. The whole thing is you have been selecting uh, candidates and all, but until and unless you have put your voter ID and password and authenticated and cast the ballot, your vote is not counted, it's not registered. So that's the problem, like I say, the past few years we've received emails from candidates who after the election, after announcing their results, they come and say that they've never received an email about the 
a successful vote or something. But that's something that they need to do before we announce the result, and not after we've done the thing. All right, so you put your username, uh, your, your voter ID, sorry, your voter ID, your credential, you click on the button authenticate and cast the ballot. Next, you have this prompt that says vote successfully cast. All right, this is what the web, web page says. You check your mailbox, you will receive an email that tells you you have successfully cast a vote in this election demo for OpenSUSE Conference 2023. So that's uh, the title of the election maybe that we have given. If you have not received this email, it means that you have never voted in the election. You have never crossed the path where it asks you for a voter ID and a password. So, after a successful vote, and uh, once the time for uh, the election has passed, now we can compute everything on Helios and we release the results. So you get a second email that says, uh, the tally for election demo uh, has been computed and released. You get a URL again, you click on that, you put your voter ID and the password again, and you will receive the results. So this is how the election runs on the electronic platform. The point of showing this uh, uh, whole process is because I wanted to show that a lot of people do the mistakes at the step before putting the voter ID and the password and authenticate. This, they, because when, what, sorry. A few times when people have complained to us that uh, they never received an email and we asked them the steps and everything, they never tell us about the step of, about authentication. So maybe they never arrived at that part. So that was the, the whole point of it. So guys, uh, the second thing about presenting this, uh, uh, doing this presentation was that uh, a few times in the past when we've run uh, uh, open source board elections or some other elections, maybe there was once we did uh, something about uh, uh, whether we need to change um, a project name or project logo. Yeah, I think it was project lo logo, project name. Uh, often we get comments from the community members on the mailing list that uh, we want to have an option about blank votes, about uh, this and this and different kind of votes. So these are the kind of comments that we want to hear from you. So that, because I am, I am uh, uh, how do you call that? I am planning to volunteer again this year for the uh, election committee. Anybody else who wants to join, you're most welcome. I've spoken to Aris and to, uh, Edwin before this presentation, and I've asked if they are going to volunteer. Yes, they are going to. So at least for this year's Open Source Board election, the three of us are volunteering, unless someone has a problem with that. Or if there are more people who want to volunteer, that's again awesome. All right. So I'm gonna, going to stop here, and maybe if you guys have questions, comments, suggestions to how to improve elections uh, on technical matters, I might not able to answer because that's for heroes. But on other stuff, yes, I'll do my best to answer. Anyone? No one. Nobody wants. All right. Go on, Gerald. Thank you. Um, no, not a question, just an addition. In a list of board members, um, we appointed because we had a resignation, um, and there is an appointed board member, um, which is um, Patrick Fitzgerald. So I think on slide three or so, um, his name was missing. Let me go back. I think it was at the beginning. No, next slide. This one? Yep. Not the next one. The previous one? This yes. one. Stop. Because, as you said, there is six board members, and Gar uh, Patrick, Patrick also is on uh, the list. I've missed Patrick. I think it was my copy paste didn't work. I, I was and it's an interesting point yes. because what happened here? Someone resigned, as you as you explained. Yes. Um, and what the board then can do is 
appoint as a full board member, including voting rights and everything, um, to fill up the board. Yes. So you could call for an election, which um, is one option, but this is a different, this is a different um, appointed position because Patrick's appointed position includes voting rights, so he's a regular yes. board member. Yes. Whereas, for example, we had uh, a treasurer, which is the kind of appointed position you have here, um, that does not have formal voting rights. Yes. So, as an example, it would be like uh, if one uh, board member resigns before his term completes, let's say six months is remaining, uh, the board, you guys, get to appoint someone to replace the, the outgoing uh, board member, and that person is going to have a term of six months until the next election. And he will be having voting rights for six months. It yes. is an appointed yeah. position, but with voting rights. But if you appoint somebody else, let's say to organize this conference, to give him uh, all the powers to decide the location and everything, he gets to do everything about the conference, but he cannot vote on certain decisions that you board members are going to decide about the conference, maybe. Correct, yeah, right. exactly. All right. And in fact, we, we indirectly relied on election officials and the last election because we looked at the runner, runners up of the election. And in, in this case, it was like a close runner up. So we, we felt very comfortable appointing said, okay, that, that was close. Yes. Um, if it had been like, you know, only a candidate with only one or two votes, then maybe we would have called a new election. Yes. Thank you, Gerald, for pointing out that I missed Patrick's name <laughs> <laughs> while I was working on my slides this morning. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, long flight, very tiring. Uh, any other comment or suggestion? I think we have one more. Um, thank you for the presentation. You mentioned one technical decision that was taken by or determined by an election, the, the ICON. Other distributions are famous for making technical decisions as a general resolution, for example, in, in Debian, where they decide on is it system D or something else. Um, it's not, I don't think it's in our charter to run these as elections, but you do have an opinion as election officials whether you would like to expand uh, big project level decisions um, and, and support this via a ballot. Uh, yes, as a community member and somebody who has been uh, volunteering in this stuff, I think it would really help if we could use this platform for more than just the board elections or some uh, other stuff. Because if you look at the open source project right now, there are a lot of decisions being taken in different areas of the project. Like yesterday itself, when, when Lubush was presenting about uh, Leap 16 and the different areas of what is being decided about uh, Leap Micro, what is being decided about Micro OS, and uh, Micro OS Desktop is going to have a new name. I think uh, I saw Richard posted that on, uh, created a poll on, on, on Reddit. There were some comments on Twitter, some comments on, on, uh, on, on the mailing list, on factory mailing list. Not all OpenSUSE members are on factory mailing list, and not all, all OpenSUSE members are either on Twitter or Reddit. So the opinions that we are gathering from people on Reddit might be a mix of members and non-OpenSUSE members. Uh, same for Twitter, uh, factory might be different, but at the end of the day, when we've uh, collected all the different uh, when the project leader collects all the different opinions and decides on something, it might still have a little bit of bias. Whereas if we use a platform like this to say, okay, we're going to, to change the logo of the project, so we want everybody's opinion, and we create that. Like, for example, the last time we, create, uh, we created a non-board election, before even creating the election, like putting the question and all the different answers, we had to, to, to start a discussion on the mailing list, like how should we formulate this? For example, uh, the example uh, you, you mentioned about uh, in, in the Debian project when they take uh, maybe technical decisions. 
Yes, we would like to help with such kind of things, discuss with heroes, discuss with the developers, and everyone. You want to have consensus about something? Uh, yes, let's talk. How do you want to gather the information and collect the yays and nays through this platform? We'd like to help. Anyway, as, as volunteers, I think during the whole year, it's only in November and December that we get to, to do something while planning the board elections. We'll be happy to do something the rest of the year as well. Uh, thank you for your insights and for your work in these two months as well. <laughs> Anything else? Anything else from the empty chairs at the back? No, nothing. All right, so then, thank you guys, and uh, enjoy the last day of the conference.